Hello, this is MMA Interesting Prospects Podcast. And on this show, we are introducing fighters with uh, with bright future, but who are not uh, right now uh, signed with bigger promotion like UFC or Bellator. Uh, our first guest is Matthew Camilleri, a featherweight from Malta, uh, who is uh, 6-1 and one in professional MMA. Uh, 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 Matthew, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, mate? Yes, thanks. Thanks, I'm good. So, uh, first of all, congratulations on your uh, signing with uh, Cage Warriors. Uh, Cage Warriors have a big history uh, with with their champion to be uh, big stars in the, the UFC. And I have a question about, about it. How many fights, uh, fights do you have on the contract? And uh, do you have uh, someone in mind that you would like to, to fight? Well, I can't disclose how much fights I have, but I have uh, multiple fight contracts, so <clears throat> obviously more than one. Um, if I had a few fighters in mind. Uh, <clears throat> I have kind of a plan, obviously, wouldn't mind fighting for the belt immediately, obviously, from coming from another organization champion, but obviously I know uh, that's not possible because I don't want to go up in the... Um, get in front of somebody that you know deserves it more than me because they've been fighting more. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in the near future, I'd like to fight. Um, uh, forgot his, na- I forgot his name. He's very entertaining in my division. Uh, uh, he's from Sweden. Uh, um, oh my god, I always forget. His name is very. I forgot his name. Uh, he comes with a. Uh, Joker's mask. Okay, uh, okay. No, I said Herella. His surname is Herella, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he comes with a nice entrance song as well. He's very entertaining. He fought on the New Year's Eve card. Uh, uh-huh. has a mohawk as well. I described him properly, but I can't, I forgot his name, which is yes, a yes, fine But uh, his, I think he's the only one that I always mix his surname, but um. Herella, his surname is Herella, so everybody knows who I'm talking about anyway, but yeah, I would like to fight him for sure, because I think he has a big name, uh, good opportunity as well. I like his style because I think me and him will go forward, so it's going to be nice. Um, And obviously I'd like to fight uh, the former champion after uh, Jordan Vucenic because I respect him a lot. And when he was a champion before Paul Hughes, I thought he was the uh, number one uh, featherweight in Britain, which I still think he's very good. But I I always had my eye on him because I always like to see who's the best is. So one day I'll be, I'll take their spot, but all about respect because I really enjoy watching him fight. Okay, and you have a like heavy grappling, heavy wrestling style. Uh, in the fights that I have a chance to watch, and uh, how do you think this style will uh, will be uh, it if it will be okay in this style, in this wrestling style to to fight in Cage Warriors? Uh, I think it's gonna uh, represent a lot of problems. I think against uh, against them, uh, like I checked. Who the top guys are in my division and even everyone i try to see everybody who who's in my division and i think i would be probably oppose a lot of problems to everybody um the only guys i'd say will be very nice against them will be very more equal uh will be a harder fight should i say is against jordan Vucenic, <clears throat> which he can wrestle a little bit too i see so um, style is very different than mine um, but I think it's going to be there. And obviously Paul Hughes, I think, because of his output and my output, I think it's going to be uh, very grinding and very... Uh, uh, it will take long to finish. We won't be able to finish each other, I think, but it's going to be... We won't quit, so it will be a very hard pace fight. That will, Those two, I think, will be the hardest fights um, that I'll have. The others will will be still hard, but I didn't see anything that kind of will surprise me. I, I didn't think 
I didn't think I've seen anything that surprises me, but Jordan Buchanek and Paul Hughes, I think they will be the hardest, I think, uh, okay. in my fights. Okay, so like the, the best of the best, champion and, and former champion. Um, yes, yes. Okay, and uh, you are uh, FCC uh, featherweight champion. Uh, you defended uh, this title, and uh, are you were you more stress stressed uh, for the the championship fight or this uh, first title defense than than other fights? Uh, the title defense, no, wasn't that much. <clears throat> I was actually, I think, title defense. I was the very uh, relaxed. I should say. Even before the fight, I was having a laugh. Well, having a laugh as in warming up, was like enjoying myself and uh, talking to my training, talking to my coaches and training partners, having a laugh and being more hyped and everything. Uh, the title, the title match though, when I went for the title, um, because of who I was fighting, yeah, I think that was the most stressful fight. Uh, before I before I got in the fight, it was stressful, but when I went in. It kind of was like, yeah, I know I'm going to win. After the first few seconds, I kind of knew I had this in the bag. Especially after after the first round, I was like, I know I have this. I'm just starting and I'm getting warmed up. But uh, yeah, before the fight, anybody that was next to me, I, like I think I had uh, doubts in my mind because of who he was. And I was like, this is the first time I'm facing somebody like this. So I didn't know, I saw his highlights, so I was like, okay, it was a bit weird, but when I got in, I was like, okay, well, it's either me or him. When I started clinching with him, I said, oh, well, he doesn't look, he doesn't feel that much. It didn't scare me at all. So it was like only in the beginning. So I kind of learned from it, not to um, think that big, like I still, I can, I'm tough. I can take it and I can give it. It's not like, oh yeah, he can knock everybody out, but they're not like me. So I was like, yeah, I can do it too. Okay, and I believe that that he was eight and two, so it's also a very very good uh, record. So so I think that it was good win. And I also I watched your last fight with uh, Azi Tomas, who is a KSW veteran. So this is why I know about him. And it was like a very 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 dominant fight. You you controlled uh, all rounds. You you try to change position improve position, ground and pound. So so I think that it, it was a great, great perform performance. Yeah. And what happened with this, the, the, the your next fight with uh, Callum uh, Malen? Yeah. Um, he got injured and he pulled out and then uh, we tried to fight somebody, but uh, nobody was taking it. So it was a bit disappointing, obviously, because I did a training camp as well in the US and uh, didn't know who he was. I thought I was going to be fighting on Cage Warriors before, but uh, yeah, then when the three weeks or four weeks before, I had a bit of a news that he might pull out and I said, not really, I don't think he's going to pull out because he's good and he never did pull out, I think. And all of a sudden, the week after, they informed me that he's injured and... <clears throat> um, Kept training hard and helping my guy, my friends out as well that were fighting. So there, but um, then I kind of knew that I'm not fighting because it's on five rounds and who's gonna take it? The more time it passed, three weeks, two weeks, nobody's gonna take the fight. If they haven't taken it in three weeks, nobody's gonna take it on two weeks. Um, and then they said nobody's gonna fight you, so that's it. So yeah, it was a bit disappointing, but it's kind of the fight game, I guess. This is the first time actually somebody pulled out. Uh, near the fight on me. So yeah, another experience, I guess. Okay. And uh, where do you, do you currently train? What is your like main gym? Uh, I train in next gen, uh, Liverpool and, and MMA and all that. And then I train as well, next gen uh, world, which is just five minutes by the train uh, across the water. So I do jits jit over there. Um, and sometimes I teach it, teach as well. Okay. And what is your favorite part of the, the training? The wrestling, BJJ, or, or striking part? Uh, mostly is the wrestling and jits part. Striking is good. Don't get me wrong. I like it. But obviously, when it comes to grappling, it's more uh, 
uh, I like to develop as well a little bit more my game, uh, getting more, uh, even learn different positions, um, for example, leg lock sometimes, and it's another area where Jits is developing more leg, uh, leg locks nowadays, so I kind of enjoy experimenting stuff, not obviously that it is my style, but uh, still learning new stuff. Learning is great because they can, if you can find somebody that does that to you, at least you already know what's he going to do, so you kind of defend against it. Not only to attack it, but only as well to defend it as well. So for me, <clears throat> having good training partners, high-level grapplers like Matty Holmes, um, Lee, um, uh, Ben, have loads of Paul Webb, uh, and then obviously I have my coach, Paul Rimmer, to show us things and help us out. For me, it's great, but having great black belts, known black belts in the UK, that have a great game, helped me out as well, because even I help them with my wrestling. I have my style, which is a bit different than theirs. So I'll help them, and they help me. But I like more the grappling side, in my opinion, wrestling and jiu-jitsu altogether. That's my favorite part. Okay, and do you have, uh, let's say, uh, a little bit uh, well-known uh, sp uh, well sparring partners like UFC fighters, Bellator fighters, uh, Cage Warriors uh, fighters? Uh, yeah, well, when Paddy was here, I was his uh, training partner, well, one of his training partners. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Colin, uh, Adam Colin. I have him as training partner as well. Uh, uh, Gav, he was in Bellator. Uh, he's in Cage Warriors as well. Um, Liam Giddens, although he's a bantamweight, me and, me and him, we always like to drill a lot against each other and uh, spar a little bit sometimes. Um, who else? Uh, Luke Riley. Um, now he's a featherweight, obviously. Good training partner as well. Um, <clears throat> ben. Hills as well, Matt Bonner, um, Shem. Um, yeah, especially I like to mix up with everybody. It's not like I have one. Um, lightweights and well, featherweights mix it up together. So even back then, weight, sometimes they come up to me. Uh, Jake McHugh as well. He's, not, he's a good amateur fighter. So you guys will see a lot of, of him as well. Okay, and uh, do you have uh, experience in uh, in uh, training outside of uh, Great Britain, like uh, US or uh, or other other country? Uh, yes, I trained with AK uh, in the US multiple times. That's where I was before I came here, and I trained at AK Thailand as well. Okay, and do you have a chance to? maybe not train uh, with Kane Velasquez or Daniel Cormier because they are a little bit bigger bigger than you, but with, with uh, other fighters uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, fought uh, for, for, for the UFC yeah. or the Bellator? Yeah, uh, well, uh, we were coached by, by Daniel, obviously Daniel Cormier, when he was fighting back in 2017 and 18. Uh, I sparred with uh, Luis Pena, uh, Sean Bunch, uh, the last one, Adam Piccolo, uh, my training partner was Adam Piccolotti, uh, well-known Belto fighter. Uh, well, there was others. Um, I grappled with, uh, back in 2017 or 18 with Islam Makachev, uh, Umar as well. And didn't get the chance to grapple with Khabib, but, uh, he was there. Um, uh, sparred with Uzman uh, Nurmagomedov. Uh, who else? There were others. I'm literally forgetting right now. Uh, but yeah, they were, the, in my opinion, they were the main training partners. Uh, Kyle Driscoll as well, a little bit. Um, but yeah, they were the main, and Mark. He's okay. there in LFA, LFA and uh, Cage Warriors as well. Okay, so I think that this kind of experience 
it's it's very good for the for the young fighter because you are out of your comfort zone and uh, you are looking for like new approaches new looks and and you can bring it to to your home gym and and uh, show some either new techniques or or just say new looks yeah oh yeah i forgot one thing uh when i was in AK thailand uh, uh me and manel cape were there so most of the time, me and him were training. Yeah, I forgot AK Thailand. AK Thailand was me and Manel K and uh, Muin Gafarov uh, from one. Yeah, so Manel K was in prison and fought for the belt at that time. Yeah, those two. Sorry, I forgot that. So I can't forget them because we spent a lot of time with them. Yes, Manuel Cape uh, may be like future flyweight contender because of his yeah, last he was performance. Yeah, he was bigger than Santos. He was bigger when he was fighting at Risen. Okay. He was, I think, big back to weight. Yeah, he was a big back to weight from the, at that time. Okay, and right now he's flyweight. But, but yeah, I, I, I believe that he, he that he can he can challenge for the title in like one or two years. I think one year. Like I think if he gets about two two wins more, maybe three. I think he can. To be honest, his style is very good. Actually, I, I actually was thinking about it three days ago. Um, his style, how he'll do against uh, Moreno. Uh, it should be good because Moreno is a non stop fighter. Manel Kemp is more uh, um, explosive and uh, calculated, I'd say. So it's a good matchup. T two different people, two different styles. I think striving wise, I think Manel Kemp is more technical, more uh, efficient, I'd say. Grappling, um, Manel Kemp is a good grappler. Just doesn't want to grapple too much. So, but I still think he has a good shot against Moreno. Although I like Moreno a lot, he's uh, one of my favorite fighters to watch because he's very uh, exciting, I should say. Or they will book Figueredo against Moreno five. <laughs> you never know. Nah, that's yeah, that's not gonna happen. Well, he, he's moving up, and I really don't want to see that fight anymore. I really don't want to see them fight anymore. It's they're just wasting uh, someone else's. Uh, shot by doing that, in my opinion. And plus, we all know he can't make weight. Uh, he's struggling to make weight now. So he said it himself, he's moving up. So Yes, yes, of course. And, and he was finished in, in two of these fights. So so I think that, yeah. that, that yeah. Brandon Moreno will fight with uh, someone else. Maybe Manel uh, Cape. <laughs> so so if you if you right now would uh, would get a call for, for, uh, from the ufc like on the Mar march card uh, in great Sorry. britain would you be interested in taking this uh, it's just, it just uh, hypothetical honestly honestly i always believe uh that everybody should be taking um steps to not try to jump on your own, jump and like jump up for no reason. I think I always like to, to build slowly, slowly, no rush. Obviously, if you tell me uh, Cage Warriors is going to offer you the Cage Warriors belt, uh, but, uh, belt fight, yeah, sure. But honestly, to earn my reputation to go to the UFC, in my opinion, I want to fight for the belt first. Cage Warriors. So for me, that's kind of like my resume to say, um, listen, I fought some of the best fighters, so I earned my place in the UFC. Not like jump the, uh, jump, jump the list just because there was nobody else and then, you know, you lose or you even win, win the first one and then lose the couple of next fights. Like we've seen, we've seen this happen multiple times. If you're not, in my opinion, you should build slowly and have that thing where, yeah, I'm a champion of this, so I earn my place. That's how I earn my place in Cage Wars, in my opinion. Get this FCC belt, defend it, and nobody can tell me, oh, you're chosen because of, uh, you know, people or something like that. Like, I don't know. And first of all, I have nobody, I don't know the people no contact with from the cage warriors and anything. And I think I earned my place because I've beaten one of the, 
the, the, that got signed in there. After I beat him, he got signed to Cage Warrior. So for me, already I'm in. And when I defended the belt, it proves that I'm worthy of getting in the promotion. So no, I would I would say I'd say it's too early for the UFC for me. And I wanna respectfully earn my keep. That's how I okay. believe. Okay, so win win some fights, win the belt, defend it and go to the UFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, what was like to to be raised in in uh, Malta? Uh, what was uh, their life look like? And uh... Uh, it was good. Um, obviously, more sunnier than here, uh, more hotter, uh, um, more I'd say simple life. Obviously, I wasn't in sport until I turned seventeen. Yeah. I turned 17, that's where I started doing MMA. Literally when I turned 17 and one month, that's where I started MMA. But yeah, it's all traditional stuff. Um, people in my country are not into sport too much and especially competing, uh, not at the high level. So uh, yeah, very relaxed life. If I wanted to uh, life, where it's normal. I could have had it. I had it and I chose this life instead, which is more stressful, but in the same time, more rewarding, I'd say. Um, but yeah, everybody knows everybody. Um, because it's a small island, we only are 500,000 people on the island. So, um, but yeah, it's nice, especially in the summer where everybody can go swimming just five minutes walk away. <laughs> Yes, yes, so it's it's great pra- uh, place. I never was there, but definitely it's, it's the the place that I would like to to go in uh, near future. And actually, I checked uh, uh, fighters from Malta on Topology, and you have the the most wins uh, from any any of this of this list because you have six wins. Uh, so so you you are you are I believe that second the most experienced fighter from Malta. The uh, the one above you was the the fighter that you beat three times. Uh, oh, to SLT, Enrico, I'm not sure. Enrico, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, he uh, he started training like two two to three years, I think, somewhere before that. When we first met with each other, that was back in a grappling match uh, to determine. The, it was called M, uh, Malta Grappling Challenge. The, so all the grapplers in our country like Matt and the weight class and the 70 kilos and we fought it out, a uh, grappling match. That's why I met him first. I think he won it, he won it the year before. Then when I came against him, I beat him quick. I beat him uh, with like 20 something zero with grappling match. Then we met each other in a amateur MMA fight, and I beat him more worse. And <laughs> we're still because he was on top of the list, and I was beating him all the time. We went for the national combat wrestling championship to determine who's going to represent our country in the national uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, I beat him for that. Then we did the semi-pro fight, semi semi-pro fight in MMA. Beat him in that. And obviously, at the end was the um, pro fight. He turned pro way before me, a year before me. Uh, and my second fight, I faced He was, I think he was three and one at that time when I faced him. And then he came against me and became three and two. But yeah, that, that was the last time we faced each other. And uh, um, he won a fight after I fought him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, like he didn't want to fight me anymore. He's like, no, 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 thanks. And I was like, don't worry. <laughs> so it's a little bit like Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya, uh, you, you know, in the, in the kickboxing right now in MMA, that that uh, just Pereira is like the, the the boogeyman. Like he won every 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 fight that they they got. So it's a little yeah. bit a similar situation. Yeah, but at the end of the day, this is the thing. Pro MMA for me, well, 
that meant a lot more for me because amateur fights didn't really care. I mean, I liked amateur MMA, but I know that pro fights, that's where it counts. Amateur fights, everybody can get beaten. The pro people care about the pro fights. And and in the pro fights, at the ending, I finished him. That was the first time they actually finished him. Uh, beating him and I finished him. That was my main purpose. And I said before the fight that this time he's not going to survive um, the rounds. I'm just going to finish him. And I did. So I kept my promise and I said, I will finish you. That, that was the only time I actually was really uh, angry uh, at a fighter because his coach said something about me. And uh, I kind of turned it on him. It's not his fault, honestly. But he said that I, the, the times I beat him, when I out grappled him and everything, it wasn't even close. He never even scored a point on me. He said, I was lucky that I beat him all the time. And I was like, okay, no worries about that. This time I'm going to beat him and I'm going to finish him. So there's no luck. I'm just going to say what I'm going to do. And I did it. And I literally did what I meant. So so it was a great feeling, I believe. Oh, no, it was, it was the best feeling. Because I said, you know, uh, you have to admit that I'm just a better man. Every time I'm in that room, if I'm in the same room as him, he'll look at me and, I, and he'll... You have to acknowledge I'm a better fighter than him in all aspects. So it kind of gives me satisfaction. But I would still train with him. I don't mind training with him. But his coach, no. Say it's his fault. It's his coach's coach's fault that me and him have altercation, and that's it. I don't know that we. I think me and him would be friends, but you know. Okay, and what you do? Uh, what you like to do uh, after the fight when you are like tired a little bit? Want to uh, your your mind need to be uh, outside of the MMA? What you like to do? Um, don't have much things to be honest because I'm always, uh, especially here, I don't have any family. I'm all alone here. Uh, I'm always either. Uh, as hobbies, I'd say I like another sport. I like Formula One. Uh, so I like to watch Formula One, uh, watch anime uh, or any um, like superheroes, like war films. I like to watch films, uh, watch races, watch fights, though. Still, I like to watch fights and uh, learn how to be better and watch previous fights of other fighters and even mind correct what well, I could have done more better. But as hobbies, I'd say watch Formula One, play Formula One on PlayStation, uh, maybe shooting games, sometimes Call of Duty, um, Assassin's Creed as well because I love history. Uh, like to watch documentaries on the uh, previous uh, wars and watch the leaders like Julius Caesar, um, watched uh, Mehmed the Conqueror uh, lately and Vlad the Impaler, what they've done, which is honestly fascinating. Uh, you think... No, no, it is fascinating for me. I never knew that Vlad the Impaler actually uh, fought against Mehmed. I knew Mehmed conquered uh, uh, Constantinople and all that. But I never knew that they existed. They existed at the same time. And Vlad the Impaler was the prisoner <clears throat> when he was young of Mahmoud's father. I didn't know. And I didn't know that Vlad the Impaler had a brother. So for me to learn everything about the, you know, the fantasy Dracula and all the crazy stuff, but I learned about the normal human being that he was and what he did. It was fascinating. First, I was rooting for for Mah for uh, for Vlad to win against Mahmed, but then when I saw at the ending what happened, I was like, "Oh, I might have actually was rooting for the probably one of the worst pe persons in the human history for what he did." So I was like, "Oh, maybe I'll change my mind. I'm, I'll go to Mahmed side to be fair, because yeah, but yeah, I like to learn from them because uh, even their." Uh, uh, what do you call it? not battle strategies, but the the mental side of the war. Um, Vlad played a lot of uh, mental uh, tactical warfare, mental warfare is on Mehmed, so it kind of distracted him. 
Um, Julius Caesar did it as well in his time. Every conqueror, in my opinion, best leader in the world, played mind games against his um, enemy or opponent. So I'd say, why? Obviously, I'm not going to impale anybody or anything, but why not um, kind of understand the way they were playing games or intimidational games where you can actually... I don't like to intimidate everybody. I don't think I'm, in, I'm in, intimidating by any means. I like to play my intimidation games only by fighting people. Uh, like during a fight, if I'm on top of someone and I'm beating them up and I can see them uh, losing their uh, their uh, their mind and like they're panicking and all that, I know I beat them. The more they slow down, the more I amp up my my output. That's kind of a mental game in my opinion. When there's, you won't start strong. They'll start crazy strong and you start like this level. But at one point, if you keep this level, they'll just have to drop at one point. And then they'll see, oh yeah, why is he not getting tired? And I am. Then all of a sudden you see me speeding up more. That for me is a kind of a mental game. So it's not about talking only, but it's about even action. So I like to learn and see the failures and the winnings from that still good okay and uh, uh, just like you said uh, sometimes there are fighters that can destroy you in first round but after that like second third round they are just gassed out and th th their mind was about to finish you in the first round after that they are a little bit like confused they don't have uh, speed they don't have a power and you can just uh, either beat them or, or just the, the finish them because they are great fighters in just this this uh, first round yeah yeah and, and uh, that's i think what most of the fighters try to do with me i think i think that's the game plan of everybody i think because they know if if people watch my fights which they did they realize that doesn't matter i don't get tired first and second is you don't, I don't think loads of people can grapple with me and keep that output. So everybody said the same thing. Oh, I'm going to knock you out. I have to, like, or I have to knock him out. So tension is there. If you miss, you'll get taken down. You defend the first one. The second one is coming. The chain wrestling is coming. So you always have to be on point where I'm going, 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 going. So you have to be non-stop. Nervous system is going nuts. So they'll get, eventually they'll be more tired, not only physically, but mentally, because they're always worried what I'm going to do. It, it's a thing, people become defensive because they know, oh, maybe I'll get defensive, so he'll get tired. But if he doesn't get tired, what's going to happen then? Will I get tired before? Will I get tired? If I get tired, what then? I have no defense. The offense is gone, so, and he's coming at me. Then it's just, okay, I lost the fight, but I don't want to get finished, which that's what people uh, criticize me for, which is not my fault, in my opinion. It's the fighter's fault because people just want to focus their energy, their last bit of energy, and just not getting finished, which is a bit weird for me. If you're in a fight, I'll never, even if I'm losing, I'll never say, that's it, I'm done. I want to go there and I want to try to win. If I get finished, so be it. But I want to win. In my opinion, first of all, is I want to win. Finishing game second. But losing, for me, I have to go till the end. I have to go. I have to try to win till the end. That's it. So, like, ne never quit attitude. Yeah, yeah. Till the last second. Everybody can drop. Even the last um, um, perfect example. Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen. Number one. Chael Sonnen was winning every single round, which is a great, like he was beating him badly. And then the last minute triangled him. But, you know, if he would have quit, Anderson wouldn't have, wouldn't have won because he was losing badly. But he took the opportunity to try to finish him every single time and you throw that triangle out of nowhere and he got him 
who else? There was another fight. I forgot, I forgot there was another fight that was winning and then clipped him. Uh, not Anderson Silva, but uh, somebody was losing every single round. And then the last... Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Perfect example. Uh, Leon Edwards versus Usman. Usman was beating him. And it was almost at the, at the point of finishing him. And then Leon Edwards threw that high kick and knocked him out. Yeah, he lost first round. Yeah, Leon. Yeah, he, he won, I believe, the first one. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't like dominant. It was, it was like a finding. But the second and third and fourth round, they were just dominant, one-sided, getting beaten, almost finished. Fifth round was going the same. And then, you know, a minute to go, exact. And he knocked him out. If, you know, if he didn't even throw that, if he said, fuck it, I'm going to defend myself to not get finished, he would have lost the fight. But he tried. So, you know, good thing from his corner because his corner, I think, woke him up because it was almost like he accepted the loss. But his corner really, really, really motivated him, which, you know, I really liked it. When I saw the, when I was hearing the corner, I was like, wow, he really is giving it to him. He needs to. He needs to. So... His corner did a very good job in bringing him back. And Leon Edwards capitalized on it, which is good. I'm not sure he's going to win now, in my opinion. I'm not, I don't think he's going to win the rematch because when I see um, a fight where you were losing a lot, not close, it was losing a lot, and only one thing made the difference because Usman switched off. I think... This fight was going to be in London. Uh, Usman is going to win. And I think he's going to win by, like, not close, but dominance. Like, the second, third, and fourth round is going to be this fight, I think. And I think he's going to literally go in and finish him. If not finish him, he's going to play it safe. Or he's going to take him down, uh, hold him, try to grind him, grind him down and win. Which I think that's that's what he should do, in my opinion. Win, dominate, and win. Don't try to separate and try to strike where he has a where Leon has a chance, in my opinion, which Leon is a great striker. If you're a better wrestler, don't try to be a hero and please the crowd if they say like that, because the crowd can cheer you and the next second can boo you just like that. And that's why I think fighters should really realize. It's not about the crowd. It's about them. It's about, win. in my opinion, people should fight be think about winning only, not about please the crowd. Please the crowd comes second. If the crowd is not pleased by your performance, then they shouldn't be your fans. Simple as. Yes, and Usman improved his striking. In we can see this in the Gilbert uh, Burns fight, in the Jorge Masvidal fight, because they knocked uh, them out uh, in Colby Covington rematch. So we can see that he much improved. But but uh, Leon Edwards is better striker. That's all. And yeah, yeah, maybe he, maybe he don't have many finishes, but. You can uh, see, you know, just three seconds and bam, <laughs> it's knockout. So, yeah, yeah. so it's for Usman, it's definitely would be better to to just grapple them, uh, him, uh, wrestle uh, wrestle him and and uh, I don't know, may maybe trying to finish him uh, on the ground. Yeah, think so. Yeah, I think I think though. Uh, <clears throat> so obviously, Leon Edwards has more technical striking, more better. Technically, um, I think power goes into Usman's uh, side. Uh, obviously, wrestling is Usman all the way. Um, grappling, though, as in jits wise, I honestly think that Leon Edward has the edge. No, Jiu Jitsu and MMA doesn't make that much of a like the biggest difference unless you're. I don't know, um, like Gary Tonin or something like that. But um, I think Leon, Ad Leon Edwards has a better technical grappling-ish. Like, if they do a grappling match, no punches, just grappling match, straight grappling match, I think Leon Edwards might have the edge on Usman, I think. Um, but, yeah, Leon Edwards, obviously, game plan is 
don't get taken down. If he gets taken down, make it hard to, for Usman to hold him down, make him work, get him tired, and then knock him out on the feet. Usman, obviously the opposite. Strike him, think, take him down, hold him down, make him tired, make him, well, can't make him quit, to be honest, but, you know, he couldn't quit, he could make him quit, but uh, grind him down, hold him down, don't let him get up, grind him on a little bit. If you have a chance to finish him, finish him. If not, keep grinding him out and hold him down. That's what I think, in my opinion. So we will find out uh, on March. I believe that Leon oh, yeah. will be able to 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 win, but but it's it's I believe the close fight and it can be uh, interested uh, interesting. It'll be a nice fight. It will be a nice fight. It won't be a boring fight. That's for sure. It will be a nice fight, though. That's why I'm looking forward to it as well. And uh, going outside of the fighting, uh, do you have some dreams uh, or bucket list things that you would like to accomplish? Uh, in your life, but not involved uh, fighting? I don't know. Not really. Uh, mm, no, not really. It's not fight related. No. Not okay, really. so it's not more cool. about w winning the title, uh, defended, uh, fighting with, with uh, great fighters and improved uh, yourself as the, the martial artist. Yeah, and have the... Uh, like, yeah, how can I explain it? Um, the only winning for me is being, uh, for example, people nowadays is the trend of double champ, you know, maybe triple champ in the future. Um, that's not what I'm aiming for. I always prefer to be like something like the GSP thing where everybody will say, yeah, he is the best weight of all times. I aim to be the best featherweight and then in the history books they'll say okay he fought everybody, he beat everybody, there was no uh, ex there was no question mark on his wins, there was just one-sided, he definitely deserves to win all the fights and uh, by far he could have been a problem for everybody even in the future after I retire. Like I want that thing where I'm the one to be remembered, in my opinion, as the best or one of the best. That's what I aim for. And obviously for the Maltese community to be to give them a someone to look up to. Um, in sports, we don't have anybody that we look up to, in my opinion. Like there's nobody that we can say, oh yeah, he was a good, he was maybe a good fighter, maybe good sports. Nobody was at all. Like not even the other sport. We don't have anybody to look up to, so I'd I'd like to be that guy to be say, listen, we're small, tiniest island in the world, only five hundred thousand people. Nobody knew, most of the countries, nobody, no one knows that we exist. But from me, people will know that we exist. People know where we are from, and people know that we and Maltese themselves know that they can achieve something that no Maltese ever achieved. So for me, this is just the beginning. Yeah, okay, I, I'm the first one that ever made it upsa this much high, like on the highest level of MMA. Yeah, sure, but some, in my opinion, some Maltese would be happy with this and they'll be like, okay, that's enough for me. It doesn't matter what happens. For me, it's not enough, not even close. I'm not here just to say, yeah, I got to this and now I'm done. No, I'm here, Cage Warriors, here to absolutely go in and dominate the whole division. After that, when I get the belt and show that I am true, then is the UFC. Start slow by slow. But even in the UFC, I won't be happy just to be in UFC. I'm aiming for the belt. I'm not just aiming to be nice being in UFC and then, you know, say I was in the UFC one day and that's it. Really want to achieve the, the unachievable put it this way, or a few people that achieved it, I want to be one of them that achieved that. And be an inspiration to you know, people uh, in my country, and uh, I want to be an inspiration to one of the uh, kids, the kids that I train, I want to be an inspiration to them, where um, they train, and I, you know, they can be happy and say, oh yeah, my trainer, you know, did this, did that, this Matthew Camilleri, and you know, be happy, 
and obviously help them to after I retire, they'll be the next big thing. For me, that's that's another thing. After my fight, I finish fighting. It's them. They will be my uh, my objective to get them where they want to be. Okay, so a little bit like uh, Daniel Cormier. He was a champion, uh, double champion actually, and then he he trained in uh, train in a, AKA and uh, also the the in high school the wrestling. So 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 yeah, I think he's, he's, a, he's a big inspiration. I met him and I um, obviously I trained when he was there as well. Um, yeah, he was an inspiration because at his age he started late MMA. Uh, always liked his wrestling style when he came in. I remember in the UFC, I was like, oh, who's this guy? You know, he doesn't look um, physically when you look at him. You wouldn't think like that. Uh, but then when he was fighting, I was watching his strike force as well against Josh Barnett. It was fascinating that single high crotches. In my opinion, he brought wrestling, proper wrestling, how it should the technical side of wrestling, not just blast doubles, which people with power can do it, but uh, the way he was doing takedowns, it's not about power, it's about technique as well, the way he did it. So for me, that's where I was like fascinated by it. So for me, it's an inspiration because he got old and he won the heavyweight belt as well. He wasn't young when he won the heavyweight championship of the world. And he beat one of the best heavyweights of all times. So, well, on record, I mean, he beat Stipe Miocic, where he was the most defending. He defended the belt most. Yes, fr three times. Yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Daniel Cormier beat him. And uh, second fight, he was beating him. And obviously, then Miocic uh, started liver shutting him and knocked him out, which I, I watched it live. And I was started, I started screaming. I was like, I started swearing on stuff. I was like, shit. I was in AK Thailand. I remember that. Uh, we were watching, I was like, whoa, he was getting dominated, nice, nice. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, crap, uh-oh. Then when he got knocked out, I was like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I think, you know, he beat the who's who. Obviously, he didn't, uh, there was only one guy that didn't beat John Jones, which, um, yeah, it's a bit um, demoralizing. Like, yeah, he lost twice against the same guy. Although the second fight he was doing very well. Um, but at the same time, I think um, John Jones is the quote unquote pound for pound guy. I think if he wins the heavyweight champion as well, championship belt as well, um, in his upcoming fight, John Jones, I think he will be solidified as the best ever person to ever do. Uh, in MMA, he will be the best ever because he's the best light heavyweight champion in the world. And then, if he wins the heavyweight championship of the world as well, you like, yeah, this guy is unstoppable. Like nobody can stop him. So, yeah, Danny Cormier for me it will be always be an inspiration. Where he came late, he did it, he won it, he kept fighting. His style is grinding as well, which I like that style. That's where for me it proves how much heart you have and the determination of winning. That for me is the best fighters in the world. Not being technique and being nice and effective and then when you when you find a grinder, he beats you up. That's a, for me is like, yeah, you're great. Tech. When you're in a great, good spot, you're great. But when you find trouble and you're in, uh, like, not get tired, but um, when you find somebody is not technical, but he's pushing you, pushing you, pushing you, you kind of not quit. Well, you, you're not the same. You're like, why am I here? I don't want to do this anymore. Like, you, I don't want to suffer that much. Then you call me and his style and Cain Velasquez's style is similar. They push, they push, they were in trouble, they came in. And that's where, for me, it proves that they're the better fighters. That, at least that's my opinion. Yes. And about Daniel Cormier, uh, I saw your first uh, professional bout and you have this entrance with right above it. Uh, with with uh, the the entrance song of Daniel Cormier, so yeah. so it was also pretty pretty cool to to see that. 
yeah, because when when he's fighting, uh, when he was fighting the UFC, he was always running uh, to the to the octagon and and this song. Uh, so when I hear this, uh, watching you, uh, your fight, it was it was uh, quite quite cool moment. Yeah, I always use his song uh, right above it from Lil Wayne. Uh, when I heard it the first time, I was like, wow, looks good. And then I started using it from the very beginning of my career uh, till now. And now, I don't know. I mean, it's good, but I like to be, um, I like to change it a little bit. I was going to change it before, but I was like, no, not yet. I want to have this. Uh, my belt and my championship fight. And then when I go to Cage Warriors, I might keep it, but I want to change it to uh, to uh, uh, Wing Wang. Uh, do you really want to taste it uh, from uh, Peacemaker's intro intro music? Because Peacemaker for me is the funniest person in the world, but still, um, I really like him. So. Uh, every time I hear the song, it's like very nice. It's kind of rock, but still funny. So it kind of describes me. Funny, but at the same time, uh, when it comes down to work, I'll work. But at the same time, I can add some fun to it. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, and Peacemaker was great TV series. Uh, it has only one season, but but it was both action, uh, fun, uh, interesting. Uh, John Cena, I believe that was perfect for for, for this role. Uh, also, uh, his father, uh, played by I, I believe Robert Patrick, was uh, all, uh, also the the great character. Maybe not good, but but great. And I I'm waiting for the for the second season definitely. Oh, same as me. Can't wait for that. We really want to see what's going to happen now. But uh, yeah, when I, um, first of all, when I watched uh, in the movie, uh, uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Yeah, he was funny. Don't get me wrong, but he was more like lethal and all that. So I was like, okay. Then when I heard they're going to do a season about him, I was like, mm. all right. I was like, okay, well, at first, because I didn't know much about him, I was like, okay, but really, how's he going to do? Then when I watched the trailer, I changed my mind. When I saw the trailer, the first bit, I was like, wow, I think this is going to be nice because it's funny. And I know he's a killer. So when you have a funny killer, in my opinion, it makes for the best because there's action. But how can you have somebody that literally murders people for fun? Well, bad guys, but be funny. That that makes it maybe I'm weird in a, in that way, but seeing people that uh, killers don't associate with fun. If you if you think about killers, you should think about them very uh, uh, very serious. They don't joke around. But when you see a killer that is funny, it's like a kid. That's what makes it strange. But at the same time, it's like yeah, well, that's what we well we're not killers really, but. We fight. So when people say fighter, they think it's, oh, he's very uh, serious. He's very aggressive. When you see me, honestly, I think most of my training partners can tell you that. Might be one of the most funniest people in the world. If you see me at Comic-Con, I won't be serious. I'll be joking around, running around, uh, trying to take photos with some great uh, people that have nice costumes and all that. I might be even buying one of the uh, helmets from Cybercraft. On Instagram, they do uh, uh, Star Wars and uh, helmets of Clone Wars and all that. I might even uh, wear one or I'll tell them to make me a peace Peacemaker helmet. So I'll walk on Cage Warriors uh, entrance music. I'll just wear that. That would be nice. And do you have a, a fight schedule for uh, Cage Warriors? Uh, right now not, not yet. Not yet, but... Um, should be soon. I'm trying to aim for March, so hopefully. Um, but no, nothing yet. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting there and uh, uh, be to whoever comes in. I guess I'm not choosing anybody, so whoever they give me, I'll say yes, obviously. I don't choose. I never chose in my life. And I always said yes, so it's all good for me.
Okay, so I'm looking forward to this, this uh, entrance because it uh, also can be really, really interesting. And of course, your next fight. Uh, and uh, I would like you to, I would like to thank you for, for this interview, uh, for your time. And I hope that you will uh, fight, uh, I don't know, two or three times in this year and then you will uh, fight for the, for the belt uh, soon. Oh, yes, absolutely. Two, three times this year, even next year, that would be nice. Hopefully so. No injuries. Yeah, no injuries and no pullouts. That would be nice. Perfect. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, good luck. Thank you, man. Have a nice day. See you. Thank you. Bye.